Coming up on Mountain News this morning, an Eastern Kentucky community remembers the life of a man who lived to serve, and the Kentucky Blood Center announces a summer giveaway, hoping to boost blood donation. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, it's 6 o'clock on this Wednesday morning. I'm Dakota Makris, and to me it feels like Monday because I'm only working three days this week, so lucky me. Let's take it over to Brandon, who has to work five days this week. Bless your heart. Well, you worked the weekend, so technically you worked your five uh, days. No, this is a new week for me. Oh, okay. So, okay. But no, I worked seven days last week. That's true. So, see, so, you're making up for it. That I am. <laughs> Averaging it out. For but yeah, so we're here this morning and things are looking yep. okay. Some scattered showers out there this morning, but for the most part, everybody's looking okay. Let's take a look see what's going on the Mountain Parkway this morning. It's daylight enough where we can see it now. And you see the Wolf Pound County line near Slay. Pretty quiet. No major issues up that way. Not as much fog as yesterday and the day before, but things are a little bit uh, foggy in spots this morning. 59 now and Wise. Wayne, too. 55 in Clintwood. 66 Somerset and Monticello on the other side of the scale. A lot of 60s out there this morning. 82 is our forecast high, which is above our average of 77. The record was set back on this day one year ago of 89 back in 2021. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. Well, we are learning more about a Louisville pediatrician charged in a murder for hire plot. Federal prosecutors say Dr. Stephanie Russell wanted her husband dead because she wanted custody of her kids. In court documents, investigators allege Russell talked to co-workers for help and used code words when talking about getting her husband killed. Well, the FBI says Russell agreed to pay a person who ended up being an undercover agent $7,000 to kill her husband. During a court appearance yesterday, a judge said Russell should remain in federal custody. Well, she's disappointed that she's not going to be able to return to her medical practice and her patients. Um, we're, in, we're still in a COVID epidemic. Um, we've got a baby formula shortage, and she's a well-respected, beloved pediatrician in our community. Well, the case will now go before a grand jury. State police in Pikeville are investigating a deadly shooting between brothers at a home near Elkhorn Creek. Police say when they arrived at the home, they discovered that two men were shot. Troopers say an argument between Cody Cantrell and his father led to a fight between Cody and his brother Adam. Well, they say Adam was killed during the fight. Cody ran from the scene but was soon found by troopers. He was also shot, but his injury was not life-threatening. He was arrested and charged with murder. Kentucky State Police is working with local law enforcement in the Big Sandy to search for a missing man. 54-year-old Pikeville local Gordon McKinney, known to his family as Terry, has been missing since May 9th. He was last spotted near the Herald community of Floyd County. If you have any information about McKinney's whereabouts, you are asked to contact KSP. Well, one community in Floyd County is mourning the loss of a volunteer firefighter. 59-year-old Philip Cottle died on Monday due to a heart attack while he was on duty. Cottle was a husband, father, grandfather, and friend to many, and people say he would help anyone he could. Fellow fighter, firefighters from Wayland Volunteer Fire Department and Garrett Volunteer Fire Department remember him as someone they could depend on and a close friend. Anytime you lose, one like this right here, it breaks up, you know, it takes some away from the family. And, but, I'll give him credit. He was good at what he done. Garrett Volunteer Fire Department Assistant Chief Grady Allen also said Cottle was a valuable member of the department and everyone in the community will miss him dearly. Well, if you drove on US 23 yesterday, you might have some additional law enforcement in the area. It was all a part of a welcoming home community for Flatwoods Police Officer Tommy Robinson. He was shot in the neck while responding to a 911 call earlier this month. Kimberly Kagey shows how grateful the community is for Robinson's service. When you see flashing lights and multiple police cruisers roll down US 23, it's not always a good sign. But in this case, it's a welcome sight. Dozens of first responders bringing backup to welcome home Flatwoods Police Officer Tommy Robinson. Well, it's definitely a pleasure to have him come back home, and we're grateful to God for bringing him through this. Robinson was shot in the neck while responding to a 911 call earlier this month. He underwent several surgeries before completing several weeks of rehab. Signs just like this one were one of many. Welcoming home Officer Tommy Robinson. 
Gina and Alan Woods were among many showing their support for Robinson. We wanted to make sure that he knew support. that we were really glad that he's made it this far. He's got to come home. You know, yeah. I know he's got a long journey ahead of him, but I think this is going to be a really good part of it for him to be able to be back here, be around his support groups. Woods worked as a police officer with him for several years. I, I was just really worried, and I didn't know that we would be able to see this day. And for him to to be able to come back home, and and he's pretty much navigating on his own, and yeah, you know, it's just a miracle. A community rallying behind Robinson as he navigates a long road ahead. That was Kimberly Cahey reporting the officers that attended Robinson's homecoming all helped respond to the initial emergency call or assisted with the investigation. Seven Kentucky law enforcement officers who died in the line of duty last year will be remembered during a ceremony this week. Governor Andy Bashir and officials with the Department of Criminal Justice training will be there. The ceremony will be held Thursday at 10 a.m. at the Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial Monument site at Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond. Attorney General Daniel Cameron announced 12 randomly selected Kentucky counties to undergo 2022 post primary election audits. Well, the audits will be conducted by the Attorney General's Department of Criminal Investigations to determine if any irregularities took place during the elections. The counties include Nicholas, Monroe, Graves, Metcalf, Jackson, Hopkins, Pendleton, Boyd, Madison, Powell, Rockcastle, and Grayson. It may be several weeks before summer, but Kentucky State Police Post 9 in Pikeville is already planning for Christmas. Well, the Post hosted its second outdoor car show this past Saturday, bringing 93 cars to the Pikeville area for a day of automobiles and awards. The event, hosted to raise money for Shop with the Trooper, raised more than $4,000. The Kentucky Blood Center announced its summer getaway giveaway and hopes to boost blood donation. Donors who give blood this summer will be entered to win a 2022 Toyota RAV4 and an all-inclusive Jamaican vacation. The RAV4 giveaway is available to anyone who registers to donate between now and September 10th. To be entered to win a trip to Montego Bay, you have to register before the 4th of July. The Kentucky Blood Center says it is still dealing with low blood supplies. Some school districts in central and eastern Kentucky are already finished with the school year, but some children who depend on school breakfast and lunch will still need to be fed. But two barriers are in the way that could make it more difficult to feed the need this summer. Chelsea Jones and photojournalist Darnielle Crenshaw explain. There are two times in the year where hunger is particularly pronounced. One is during the holidays when we are trying to do all of the things that we try to do during the holidays. The other is at the beginning of the summer when school ends and children now need support during the summer. Michael Halligan is the CEO of God's Pantry Food Bank. His organization covers Central and Eastern Kentucky. Last summer, the number of children fed through this program reached about 70,000. That number will go up this summer. There are two economic hurdles that have Halligan's attention, inflation and a national school lunch program funded by Congress set to expire June 30th. So finding different ways of getting food to kids during the summer when school's not in session is a really important thing for all of us to think about. Leanne Connor is already thinking about it. She is the food service director at Jessamine County Schools. Schools in this district is already out for the summer. Inflation will impact her summer feeding sites. We're unsure of the amount of reimbursement we will receive for every meal starting July 1st. So we're operating just being as financially responsible as we can. Last summer, Jessamine County Schools served 500,000 meals. That's a lot of meals. It's a lot of food, and it's a hard number to comprehend. And this is just the beginning of summer. But organizations like these are finding alternative ways to close the hunger gap. Six oh nine here on this Wednesday morning, middle of the week and middle of the road when it comes to rain chances. Let's see what we got going on this morning on my pinpoint Doppler radar. A few scattered showers out there, even a heavier pocket of rain just south of Hazard this morning in Perry County. So we'll keep an eye on it for you, but most of the rain kind of moving out for now. But more on the way a little bit later today. Fifty five Clintwood, fifty nine Wise, fifty nine Wayne. Everybody else is in the sixties this morning. Looks like Lexington, the warmest spot in our region at sixty seven. Somerset, Monticello, just behind them.
at 66. 82 later today, scattered chances for showers and storms off and on. Some of those storms this afternoon could be on the stronger side. Unsettled weather pattern. That's basically what we're dealing with. Strong storms, heavy rain possible. The next couple of days, more so tomorrow than today. And then a drier Memorial Day weekend, even though I think, don't think we'll get a rain chance out here as quick as we wanted to on Friday. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you so much. At 610, we come back here on Mountain News this morning. Federal investigators uncover a plot to assassinate a former president. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes.